I am Ricardo Navarro. I am from Cesta, Friends of the Earth, El Salvador. The first thing that climate change affects our countries is agriculture. For example, last year in my country, uh, when the race started, uh, people were getting ready to, to harvest, uh, to, to uh, the government, as a matter of fact, said, okay, now you, know, you can plant. And uh, when people planted the seeds, at that specific moment, rains stopped. So uh, there was some time that there were no rains, so all the seeds died. And of course, that means a huge loss. And then after that, then you start getting the rains again. What I'm saying is uh, all these uh, changes in weather patterns, uh, the first thing they affect is agriculture. And agriculture means food, that's the problem. Now, after that, uh, we have also the health impacts. Because if you have, for example, a flood, uh, big rains, uh, then immediately you start getting things like dengue fever, for example. That's another. And third, uh, you get the so-called severe impacts. Like we have big hurricanes, big droughts. Now, for example, in Burma, they just had a cyclone, you know, that uh, took the lives of tens of uh, thousands of people. So these kind of things uh, are the ones that we're experiencing uh, with climate change. And uh, that is just a start. We are, uh, the way things look, it seems that uh, the situation is going to be much worse in the future. I believe uh, we should aim not to increase aviation. As a matter of fact, we should try to reduce aviation. We have to use, for example, technologies uh, to communicate and uh, be able to reduce travel. We have to see if we can take vacations uh, not far away and perhaps going by train or even better, if we can go by bicycle. Uh, aviation is just the result uh, of increasing business. You know, the people who benefit more about uh, this uh, aviation are big industry, planes, uh, hotels, uh, and the like. Uh, and given the situation of uh, serious climate change in the horizon, I believe we should reduce aviation as much as possible. We should first of all look at our countries. A lot of times uh, in countries in the third world we export crops and very often people in our own countries don't have enough to eat. You know, when you look at this export, who benefits? You know, I mean a couple of jobs you generate, but just a couple. The people who really benefit are those who are in the big business. What we have to do is to look in a development pattern, looking to the country, looking inside the country. We should somehow use the resources in a way that generates food for the people who live in the country. It brings a health system for the people who live in the country. It brings jobs for the people in the country, education, housing for the people in the country. I believe all this export-oriented is just not good for the development. I think we should look more inside and see what we need and how we can use all the wealth to satisfy our own needs. I believe that what we should do is to uh, have a time frame. For example, in the next uh, 20 years or so, we should try to go to zero carbon emissions and have a new kind of development. Let's talk about uh, solar energy, wind mills, let's organize our production. The problem is that uh, now all the so-called development, all the so-called uh, production, trade, uh, they are promoted by big corporations. This is corporate-led development. And the main idea is to increase the wealth of these big corporations. Now, this is what got us into the trouble, you know. So, trying to use now a more fossil fuel, particularly carbon, that is very polluting, uh, I think is a crime. It's a real crime against humanity. I think we should try to keep all these uh, uh, fossil sources underground. 